Hi, my name is Kent Nixon. I'm the principal here at Evergreen Elementary. I, I'm having this video right now to, to answer some of the questions that a number of people have had regarding what we're doing next year with our dual language program. Before I talk about that, I want to explain a little bit about what we're doing right now with our dual language program and what we've been doing for the past 17 or so years um, here at Evergreen. Our, our school has been a 50-50 model where half the day, the morning, and half the day afternoon are in two different languages, one English and one Spanish. So right here, we have, uh, for, we'll take second grade as, a, as an example. We have Ms. Villalobos, I'll just put, uh, indicate that teacher as, as Ms. Villalobos with the B. And then her partner teacher, Ms. Dawson, uh, is as the English instruction teacher. So S for Spanish, E for English instruction. So the morning class for Ms. Villalobos is in Spanish, and uh, after she's done with her wonderful instruction, her class goes all to Miss, Miss Dawson's class in the, for the English instruction. Vice versa, Miss Dawson's English class, after her morning instruction, goes to Miss Villalobos for, for the student's Spanish instruction. So everyone in our school has this, this structure. Um, every student gets English and Spanish. That's part of the structure that we have. So within a whole grade level, it would look like this, where we have two partner teachers, Ms. Villalobos and Ms. Dawson, Ms. Juliet, Ms., uh, Ms. Carta and Ms. Juliet. And so that's how our current structure is. Everyone gets 50-50. We've noticed that our, our community has evolved in its population. Uh, which means our students have, have evolved. Our, our student population here at Evergreen has evolved from a 50-50 model of native English speakers to native Spanish speakers, which is the, the goal of, of a dual language program, an effective dual language program. And our current uh, population of, of Evergreen is about 90% um, Hispanic or other, and about 10% of native English speakers. So when I say Hispanic, I, I mean to say uh, native Spanish speakers or other, and 10% and native English speakers. It's, we're, we're focused on language. And so, so that, that, creates, uh, that creates part of a problem. Um, also, one of, our, um, one of the things that we've noticed is that um, we have a, a number of students that are, that are coming to our school having never had exposure to English nor Spanish. And that's, that's a problem because they're, they're being thrown into a school system that, uh, that forces them to learn two foreign languages simultaneously. That's, that's pretty daunting to, to say the least. Um, and so, uh, so we're looking at ways to, to better meet the needs of, of our students, um, all students, not just those who are a good fit for a dual language model. We want to uh, to have a structure that would support all students, regardless of their background. So, so I want to explain uh, uh, what we're what we're planning on doing for kindergarten next year, which is very similar to what we're we're doing here. So our our, our uh, morning, I'll put that here. Our morning and afternoon classes, the Spanish class in the morning for this teacher would go to this afternoon English teacher and exactly the same as we uh, talked about here of what we're currently doing. We have a, a two, two separate versions, two adjustments, and they're going to be indicated like this. Now, this one, I'm actually going to erase that line and put, that, put this in a different color to, to indicate that this is an all-day English class. You'll notice that they start in English and end in English, and there's no switching. This class would would be in a teach in a classroom where the teacher teaches half the day in English, and then that teacher would switch her language, his or her language. Right now, it's a her uh, to uh, to be Spanish, and so it looks a little different, but it's actually um, pretty simple. Now, if we were to continue this model year after year after year, these this group of students would never change, and they would have the same students for five years in a row. 
And to me, that's, that's not a good fit for, uh, for students. That's not a good situation. It's a structural situation. It's not something that the students choose or that the teachers would choose. This is something that's just structurally uh, a consequence of the structure. And so it's appropriate for kindergartners. We want, we, we want those sweet kindergartners to have a simple structure. Um, and then moving, moving into first grade, we would have um, a, a, different, a different model. And the different model, again, is to, is to avoid having this segregated situation where, this, where we have the, the, Eng, the, the, Eng, the all day English students and the dual language students. We don't want to have a perceived separation. And I've seen that in other schools that I've been an administrator at. And it's, um, it, it can be very divisive. And so I really do not want to even consider having a model that would be ongoing, that would s support and possibly cause a, um, a, a division in the school or community. So, our integrated model, and I'm gonna add right here that this is going to be grades one through four, is going to go as follows. We have our morning class, and half the class would go to an English class. The other half would, go, would then go to, would at the same time go to the second English class. Now, um, I'm going to also highlight subject and content matter. So, for example, we'll have the red circle represent our Spanish, our, our Spanish language, um, language arts, and our science and social studies. And then our, and I'll circle these as well. And then we have a, a square, a rectangle. It's not perfect, perfect, so we'll call it a rectangle or a quadrilateral. And I used to be a math teacher. And then, um, and so this, this represents the other content, which is ELA and math. And you'll notice that all of the ELA is in the English instruction, which makes sense, it's English language arts as opposed to Spanish language arts. So in this case, we would have an additional um, English language arts right here. So um, so our, our Spanish, go, going back here, we have our Spanish morning class would be split into two classes right here. These two classes, um, well, I'll, I'll come up here. These two morning teachers would have half their class go to this Spanish class, and half of this class would meet to make that full class. So right now, this, this uh, morning teacher, the Spanish teacher, would have her class, her morning class split into two teachers, and then her afternoon class would be comprised of half of one teacher's class and half of another teacher's class meeting to be a full afternoon class. All dual language. The green represents dual language. Now, half of the other half of this morning English class would then go down to their Spanish class, and so would half of this class go to the Spanish class. Now there's only one part remaining, which is our, our all-day English group, which is, starts off in English here, and half of them would come up to this class, and half of them would come up to complete that class. So it looks like this tangled web of cat's cradle, but, but it's really a way to integrate this English, all day English class in with their dual language Spanish um, students. So that way, socially, they're they're mixing, they're integrating, they're learning from each other. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a powerful model to be able to avoid a segregation and to take advantage of and benefit from an integration. So um, 
why do we want to have an all-day English? I mentioned one where we're, we want to support students whose native language is neither English nor Spanish. And it's not just students from Guatemala. This is, this is any student that might come from um, any country that doesn't speak English uh, natively. Um, it could be someone from Germany uh, or someone from, from Japan or Taiwan. It's, it doesn't matter where they come from. If, they're, if they don't speak English or Spanish fluently, um, they may need to, to be in an all-day English class to support their English education. And, and then, then we can go from there. Um, we're not closing the door on the opportunity down the road to be in a dual language or to learn a second language down the road. We also want to support students with special needs in language. That's, that's very important. We, have, we currently have some students who, uh, who have uh, an IEP that is based on, uh, on reading or language, and that is uh, very difficult for them to be forced into two languages uh, just because they're coming to our school. So an all-day English option would serve them as well. It would also serve students whose, uh, whose family educational preferences are just stay with English, and that's okay. We, we currently have over 100 students who are choosing to go to other schools simply because they don't want to have the, the dual language um, as, as a part of their kids' education. And that's, that's okay, that's, that's a, a family decision. But we want to provide uh, an option for those families to come to, back to our school. So these are uh, a number of the reasons that, that we are uh, moving to an integrated model. It looks complex, but I hope through walking through this with me, it, it clarifies how this is, is going to, to play out. Um, and I'm sure there's gonna be more questions regarding criteria for the program. How, how does my kid get into the, the all day English class? What happens if we have too many or not enough? We, we're already planning on, on alternatives and adjustments to accommodate those situations. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Uh, contact the office if you want to make an appointment with me. I'd love to, to meet with you, answer any questions you might have. Um, this is an, clearly an adjustment and I, I, we want to make sure, I want to make sure that all of your questions are answered and that you feel comfortable moving into next year. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. We'll talk to you soon.